My name is Leonard Searcy again. I am an actor, a professional actor. Uh, I'm excited to learn more about you guys and uh, to share with the community um, what you have to offer. Uh, I'm going to introduce everybody you know, with, with uh, their bios. So first, on my far left, Michael Starberry uh, is an award-winning writer and actor known for the Sundance premiered film, The Inevitable Defeat of Mr. and Pete. I love that movie. If you haven't seen it, please go and do so. Um, which was nominated for an Independent Spirit Award and a, um, I don't know how to pronounce this again. I, I went to public school, how do you say it again? Humanitas? Humanitas. Humanitas, that's right, Humanitas Prize. He has developed pilots for ABC, Fox, FX, NBC. He's currently working on films for Paramount, Disney, Warner Brothers, New Line, and uh, HBO. Right next to him, we got Reggie Henderson. Uh, he's the owner of Soul Tools Entertainment, screenwriter. He's a director and music producer. Uh, he's the writer and director, main character of the film uh, uh, Bohemian Sun. Uh, currently working on his latest film, Government Gang, set in the 1920s. It looks super dope. I haven't seen it yet. But uh, I can't wait to, to make that happen. Uh, right next to me is E.G. Bailey. Uh, he's a filmmaker, director, curator. Currently, he's, uh, his film New Neighbors premiered at the Sundance Festival. Uh, it's, it's a great film, too. It's a really great short, very powerful. Has been featured in over 90 festivals worldwide, understandably. Absolutely. So yeah, please give it up for your panel. Give it up for your panel. I just got a few questions for you guys. Um, you know, so answer them as best as you can. And um, I'll move right into it. This first question is something that's really, um, it, it's really a big thing. A lot of people are, you know, kind of like that, they're on that positive thinking is like the, the path to to success or whatnot. Uh, I, I would ask you guys, one, what do you think about that? Two, what is your self-talk like? Uh, and w Just whoever wants to answer first. What is your self-talk like? Yeah. Hello? Okay. So, you know, that, that's interesting because I play basketball, right? And a lot of the time when I'm, when I'm, plan, I'll, I'll just be going through the motions until somebody elbows me. And then it's just like, oh, we playing for real now. Right. <laughs> I kind of take that same approach with my writing, except for I feel like I get elbowed every day. So there was a lot of people who basically were telling me, you know, you live in Minnesota. Like, you don't know anybody in Hollywood. Like, how, you know, you can't be a screenwriter. You can't do this and this. Mm -hmm. To me, that was just like, okay. And... That's my talk. My motivation is I don't want anybody else to be right about something that I feel like I can do, you know. Absolutely. And and so, you know, but but now, you know, being in the industry for so long and actually working in it, you just it's it's you know, you just find yourself in your groove. You know, I don't really need that that thing where I'm trying to prove someone wrong. You know, you always want to improve and get better, but at the same time, once you are a professional, you know, now you're a professional. This is what you do. Mm -hmm. So there may be times where you're like, this isn't very good, but you don't sulk. You get it better. Absolutely. So, you know, you're, the motivation was there when people doubted me, and now the motivation is to kind of, you know, you want to be a professional, you want to keep your spot. Yeah. So you try to improve and get better, and, you know, you sit down and do the work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, hello? Hello? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, first thing, uh, every Sunday, 10 a.m., if you want to catch another elbow, brother, you know, just let me know. Um, <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> for me, it's kind of similar to what um, he was saying, and, and being uh, now fully independent is the driving force for me to try to make sure I maintain some consistency. And so with that, it's like, okay, what you gonna do today? You know, what's your, what, what is gonna help you get better for tomorrow? and keep getting better for tomorrow. Because in Minnesota, as, as he said, people give you that kind of 
stank eye look. Like, yeah, yeah. Minnesota, you know, what y'all doing in Minnesota? You know, first we have to get over the hurdle that there is black folks in Minnesota. Yeah. Well, you know, well. there is, but not only that, there's actually talent in Minnesota. Absolutely. You know, and then my job is to make sure that I'm putting my best foot forward to show people like, see, this is the talent. And so for me, my self talk is always about getting better. You know, and, and and working each day as hard as I can to make sure that when it calls where I might be fortunate enough to get, you know, as many calls as Starberry is right, right now. Right. Yeah, that I'm ready, that. you know, and I'm ready to say, Okay, you know, here's what I got to offer. So just constantly just pepping myself up to, to stay ready and stay motivated. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you ain't got your own, see what had happened was. It's all good. <laughs> I can share. There you go. Um, I think for me, you know, um, I, I look at it like uh, Michael Jordan or, or Kobe Bryant, you know, like going into the gym and practicing all day before a game. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, um, you know, I usually am up between 8 and 10 and go to sleep between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. So um, I basically... You know, I I put I put in as much work as needed, um, but I also I work on a lot of different projects and a lot of different disciplines, um, so I'm always multitasking. Um, so uh, that's a lot of it. Um, but I feel like if I can get in there and work harder than anyone else, um, then uh, then I'll be ready when opportunities present themselves. Um, but I also. You know, I believe in the law of attraction, and I believe in the power of the universe. And so, um, for me, uh, you know, I, I believe that if you can name it and believe it, uh, it can manifest. Um, and so, um, you know, and I, I also create five-year plans. Um, and in 2010 or 2011, my five-year plan was by the end of five years to have made a film, um, uh, but there was a few steps. I had taken um, a number of years off from, I, I made a film, but we couldn't finish it because uh, I learned how to edit on film and I didn't know how to edit digitally. Um, and, uh, and so I tried to hire three, four editors. It didn't work out, and so I put the film aside. Um, and I put it aside and said, well, I'll come back to it when I finally learned how to edit on uh, digital. And so I went to New York and did a program uh, called the Edit Center, which is a great program. They throw you into productions that are in process and um, got a chance to work with Deborah Granick and um, another director from Germany. Um, and she liked my work, so she asked me to edit her feature, her first feature. Um, and she was living in Germany, I was here. And so we would edit. We edited it for a year, um, just via online, um, and uh, and that premiered at Berlinale. And so after that, I said, "Well, I'm coming back, and I'm making a film." Um, and eventually, that film ended up being New Neighbors. And yes. so, um, I also have a, a mug that says, "Proceed as if success is inevitable." Yes. It may not be a reality, <laughs> but if you don't believe that it's inevitable, then it'll never happen. So. You know, you know, it's interesting because the thing about reality is it always starts on the inside. You know, before you know what you're gonna say, you have to think it. Before you know what you're gonna do, you have to think it. So I mean, it's it's eventual reality, right? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it seems like you know, you guys is, is, is there's a theme where it's like you know you visualize and then you work. You just go to work. It's not necessarily a I'm just staying on this positive thinking. I'm staying on this image. Right, I'm staying on, you know, that's, that's what it feels like. Um, so then my, my next question would be, um, what, what advice would you give to a person coming behind you, you know, who wants to uh, write film, you know, or a TV show, and, uh, uh, you know, and then get it distributed or get it, um, you know, uh, get get a view for, by the masses. Um, I believe in just starting where you are. You know, I I uh, have only been doing screenplays for 
a couple of years. Um, but I started out uh, as a poet, um, and and I did, did some short story writing in in college. Um, but primarily, I I did um, theater and radio, um, and so um, I just believe. To me, I, I take the Orson Welles approach, which is to to do everything. You know, he did theater, radio, film, um, and because all of his preparation for being a filmmaker, I've always wanted to be a filmmaker. I, I've always called film my final destination, and so everything that I have done, I take it as experience and learning because inevitably it is going to contribute to something that you're doing in film. Um, and so even as I was working as an actor as a has a assistant director in theater um or uh directing um you know i was paying attention to how plays were put together um and then did that um and and then started dipping into into screenwriting um you know but they're very different forms but it, you know write write every day write poetry if that's what you write right. write short stories write essays because all of that will be useful when you decide to to move into it or to to specify what it is that you're doing. Um, so, um, go on um, when you're saying for people that's coming behind me or coming behind us. It's funny because the panel that you had up here earlier with Craig Rice, as I was telling him, he was he was my Gordon Parks, you know, and. And one of the things he always um, preached was do the work, you know. And um, I, I, I never forget, and it's just a quick short story, when um, he had called me up, and I'm probably like, I don't know, uh, was it 91, 92? You know, 20, something like that, 21? He's like, hey, you know, I got us a job we're going to work on, you know, um, be ready. I was like, all right, what am I doing? He's like, oh, you do some PA work, you know. I was like, all right, cool. And so we uh, come up to the walker. And in there is Spike Lee, you know, um, doing a commercial, you know. Um, and Carl Franklin was there who was working on Laurel Avenue, which he was talking about. And I'm just like in awe. Like, this is. That was here in Minnesota? Yeah, this is there. You know, I'm just like, that, that's, you know, Spike Lee, you know. And then uh, I never forget Craig Rice. He's like, are you ready? I was like, yeah. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a clue. You know, I didn't know what, what I had to do, but I just knew I was going to be ready, you know. And so I took that kind of same approach now. You know, I dipped away from film a little bit. You know, I went, you know, I was the uh, same like EG when I was like, when I was going to film school, I went to film in the cities. We were like actually film cameras, you know, where we got reels and, you know, 16 millimeter and all that, you know. But being a poor kid from the north side, I couldn't afford to keep it up, you know, so I kind of dipped away with it. But I always still kept writing. You know, I was, uh, I wrote for my high school, a couple plays for high school during Black History Month. So I was always kind of still woven in it, you know, although not fully committed to it, you know. Um, but it's just important that if this is what you want to do, to realize that there's going to be ups and downs. But... Um, as E.G. was saying, as long as you're doing stuff that's going to prepare you for it, you know, um, and whether you might not even know it, you know, I mean, I went into music production, you know, and as we know, music is the integral part of film, Absolutely. you know, and uh, that's kind of funny. I kind of mirrored Craig Rice because Craig Wright kind of did some of the similar stuff um, now that I'm talking about it. But everything, you know, the, the experiences that you go through, you know, how can you apply that, you know, and that's what birthed my first independent feature was the experience of me meeting my father for the first time, you know, um, as well as um, me losing my house. I lost my house in a house fire, and the first thing that I grabbed was, you know, a bunch of old stories that I had, you know, that I had written, because I knew, like, one day I wanted to dig back to these and kind of rebirth these. So um, just do things daily, you know, and, and keep... Um, keep that spirit of wanting to do creative stuff, especially in this day and age now, you know. Like I said, when I was doing it, first I had to get 16 millimeter, you know, film, and that only lasted 15 minutes a row, and that row cost $85, mm -hmm. and then I had to get that developed, and that cost another $140, you know, just like, shh, man, I'm, I can't do this. <laughs> you know, I've got that type of money, you know. Right. We, we wasn't built like that, you know, so. Um, but now, I mean, 
you got so many resources available for you. It's like, you know, just have the stick to itness of it and then you can do some amazing things. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I I talk to writers all the time about um you know, I, I get asked uh, often, what, you know, what should I do? I have this screenplay done, and, like, what should my next move be? Um, you know, a lot of the times, y you, you write a script, and you feel like, you know, you're Tarantino right now. And, and somebody's, you know, need to know that immediately. But what I like to tell writers is, you know, the best thing that you can do is have more than one script. And that's if only if, if you're really focusing on wanting to be a screenwriter, if you're wanting to be a writer director, you, you know, you can write the movie that you want to write and, you know, try to get financed and whatnot. But if your goal is to write Hollywood movies, to be hired by Paramount, you know, Universal, Disney, the idea you should have is, okay, I'm going to send this screenplay that I'm that I have that I'm in love with and I think people are going to love to this producer or this uh, 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 agent or manager and when they love it I know that the next question they're gonna ask me is what else do I have and when they ask me that question I'm going to have something now this is coming from experience you know I wrote um, Mr. and Pete, and we sent it to uh, the eventual director, George Tillman, and George loved it, and he didn't want to share it with anyone because he wanted to make it, and he didn't want anybody to know right away. So he said, Mike, what else do you have? I said, well, I have a couple of things, but I have this Hitman movie that I like, and you know, I can send it to you, and he read that, and he was like, whoa, let me get you like a manager I was like, I don't know if I really want a manager right now. And I was dead serious. Like, I don't know if I'm ready. He's like, I'll just send it out and then you can take some meetings. So I met with every manager in Hollywood. I signed with a manager. My manager asked me, what else do you have? I was like, I have this pilot that I wrote. I don't know if anybody's going to like it, but it made me laugh. And I sent it to him. He was like, whoa, let me get you an agent. I went to every agency and I ended up signing with CAA. And CAA read it and they said, well, this is, you know, it's really funny. We don't think anybody will make it. And I swear to you, two weeks later, they called me, HBO wants to make this, or not HBO, uh, Rough House wants to make this pilot. That's David Gordon Green and uh, their deal is with HBO. So we went to pitch it to HBO and they passed. Then we went to pitch it to Comedy Central and they bought it. And that, and that was pretty much the beginning for me, just because I had other stuff. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, and, and all that came from just, you know, it, there was a lot of sacrifice in that. Mm. I mean, I, friendships, time. I don't, I, don't get, I don't get to kick it, you know? <laughs> like, it wasn't any of that, but I was doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, that goes back to what you said, A.G., which was just keep writing. Yeah, you know? and, and that's what it was, you, you know, and in obscurity, too. Nobody knew. You know, I'm just at home doing this thing, and when it was time, it was just like, oh, I got this, I got this, and, you know, good things happened because I had things to show them. You know, it wasn't, you know, they recognized it wasn't a fluke, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's true. Um, I think one of the things, uh, the, one of the struggles um, in terms of, you know, after getting in Sundance, it was that very thing, you know, taking a bunch of meetings, and ask, they asked that question, you know, what do you have? And I have other short screenplays um, and other short ideas, but I didn't have a feature, you know. And, and that's been one of the, the hardest struggles in terms of getting another significant opportunity. Um, everybody's looking for a feature, you know. Uh, and so it, I would say even if you're a writer-director and you uh, make a short, uh, have a feature, either feature concept, um, or um, a, a draft of a, of a script, um, a finished script if possible. Um, but I think, you know, I mean, it, they're, they're interested in you as a filmmaker, but they're really interested in what's the next opportunity that they can invest in. Um, and if you don't have a feature, you know, they, they don't see many opportunities in short films, 
you know, they're just looking at it to see whether or not you can do the job or whether or not you, um, you know, you have potential. Um, but they really want to see the next thing. And, and if I had to do it all over again, I would have a feature already ready um, that, I've, that I've written, um, you know. But because, it, but it, it, uh, you know, also doing the, the festival circuit, um, you meet a lot of people that are, that, you know, you talk to a lot of people. And I talked to the sister in Chicago. Um, and I was, you know, I told her, um, she had this, she wants to make a short film. Um, and it come, she's a screenwriter, or she wants to be a screenwriter. And I told her, um, what is a, because she kept telling me about her, her experiences as, a, as a, a child. And I said, well, just take one of those memories and just write it down. Hmm. Like, don't think about form. Don't think about, just write it. Just write the experience. Think about what each person in that experience did or said. Write that down. Form you can figure out later. I still sometimes, I feel like I don't, I'm still learning the, the screenwriting yeah, form. Yeah. Um, and I'm always trying to push it. Um, and uh, and I'm, so I'm some, no good at it. So it it's, <laughs> it's its own animal. Uh, you know, Michael might be, you know. The tamer. Feel, <laughs> feel that, like he's conquered a little more. But I still feel like it's a strange beast I'm still trying to wrestle with. Um, and then coming from, coming from it as a poet, you know, it's it's it feels harder because your poetic tendencies keep come and it's not it's not really right. about poetry um right. and so um so that's that's also a struggle but i think you have to start with just literally putting any idea down you know but then her response to me in an email was uh well you know i i want to um flesh it out more, I want to take more time. And and to me that's like that's not a death knell, but that's like that's starting to chip away, you know. Um first you gotta get it down anything down on paper and then uh just keep putting it down and then you can finesse it later and figure out how to get it into the form and get it into a story. Um you know, but a lot of people they want to have it completely ready. They they want to know everything before they start. Yeah. And you can't know everything, no. you know. And things change as you know as the process continues. Go, go ahead, Richard. Oh, and and to kind of, I kind of bridge the gap between E.G. and Starbird in terms of my current project, where I I was in the same way doing the film festival circuit with Bahamian Sun, and going to the the shorts and and and. and having a gap of time between that project and this project, you know, I knew that I wanted to get something out, you know, so I wrote The Government Gang, um, which is a 20s uh, mobster flick based on Tulsa, Oklahoma race riots, but I wrote a full feature of it, but I created a short, you know, so I could show people a proof of concept, mm. like like E.G. saying that they know I can do the work, but then, you know, when somebody of a bigger potential, bigger statue can actually see the full feature, you know, or, or read the full script and know um, what what the whole thing entitles, you know. But um, so, yeah, I mean, there's many ways you can do it, but uh, you just have to start off with writing and have something ready to go, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, that's, that's in it's funny because it's, it's, it's really looking at, like from what I'm hearing, it's really looking at yourself as a business, you know, like me as an actor, I, you know, they, uh, when I go for jobs, they want to see a reel. Like, when, you know, when I spoke to you, like, hey, and I, I, I didn't have a reel, I just had this monologue that I recorded myself doing. And it's like, yeah, that doesn't mean anything to us. Like, how do you look, you know, uh, on, a, on a film? Like, you got to have, you know, proof that you've even been in anything. And, you know, having to understand, okay, uh, this is just how people understand this business, you know. This is how you prioritize, uh, how you go about moving to the next level. Okay, I've written all these different things. Like you said, you know, now you want somebody to see it, and you know that the next question is going to be, what else do you got, you know? And even if it's just starting with a short to, um, you know, show people or whatnot, and then, uh, you know, and then having that follow-up work, oh, yeah. You know, you know, oh, that's the guy who made New Neighbors, you know. Uh, and, you know, it's just 
that's that's where it starts. So that's that's really cool. It's really uh that's really interesting that it's all related in that way. <clears throat> um my next question is related to okay, you know, you kind of touched on this being black, being from Minnesota and keeping the integrity of, you know, what you want to teach, right? Or what you, what you want to say, you know, as as a uh, as a black man in Minnesota to the world, you know, keeping that integrity, but also uh, balancing that fear, or is that fear even there? Like, will, will they understand? Will they, you know, rock with this? Will they, uh, you know, buy it? You know, is is that is that fear there? And then, you know, just speak on that, you know, as it is. Well, if you're working for Hollywood. I mean, there's a mandate, right? I right. mean, if I'm writing a movie for Universal and it's a big commercial film, then I know what I'm getting into. Mm -hmm. But if I write something like Mr. and Pete, then they know what they're getting into. Right. So, you know, and, and I do like to write big Hollywood movies. I mean, that's was part of the appeal for me mm -hmm. as, as a screenwriter. But also, you know, even then I try to do it in my own voice. You know, and that's an, that's another important part. You know, your voice. Mm -hmm. um, like, I would lean into my poetic side if I was writing a script because that's going to make those words on a page feel like they're coming from a place that nobody else can do that. Like, you know, I read your script. I want to know, wow, like, this doesn't feel like anybody else's. This feels, like, authentic and real and, you know, it's a page turner because it, you know, the way it flows. And, like, there's only a few people really who do that. A lot of, you know, writers are just doing what other writers have done. Yeah. Um, and, and voice is a big part of that. You know, I've had some issues with um, certain things that people want to censor, you know, that I've written. Um, you know, I wrote a, a cop movie where I would just say the dialogue was probably a little too real for them. Like, they didn't, they didn't really, you know, it's just like, I don't know if, you know, <laughs> here, and here's the excuse they give you. This is really funny. We like it, but we don't know if, you know, the next higher ups will, you know, if right. they'll get it. So would you mind changing it? Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, let's just see what they say. <laughs> you know, yeah. let's just go yeah. ahead and see what they say about it. Yeah. But that that is the excuse that they'll give you. Um, you know, you you just have to be honest with yourself. And I will I will say that, you know, confidence in your writing is at least for me, because I, you know, I'm not like a college educated guy. Yeah. I learned how to write just by sitting down and doing it and reading a lot of screenplays and reading a lot of novels and watching probably way too many movies. Mm -hmm. But that's how I learned, you know. The more you do it, the more you'll find your voice and your confidence. But it does take, it doesn't hurt to have a champion. Someone's Absolutely. telling you, keep going, keep going, this is good. Like, I see you getting better. And then you find your voice and you don't worry about, like I never worry about like, will someone understand this from, you know, I'm a black guy and I'm giving this to a white dude and mostly white people are going to have to say yes or no. What do I do? I just try to be honest with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? On the page. <clears throat> and if that comes through, like I think it's doing, then I think, you know, at the end of the day, it'll work out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, um, we we each have our own uh, voice that, that is uh, tailored by our experiences, you know. Uh, I was born in Liberia, grew up there till I was 10, uh, moved to outside of Chicago, went to Notre Dame, ended up in Fargo, ended up in Minneapolis. Wow. That's a very strange and unique, <laughs> very unique yeah. path. Um, and so uh, those are my experiences, and so that's what I write from. Um, New Neighbors is a very Midwestern film. Absolutely. You know, it's it's Minnesotan. Uh, it's set in Minnesota. Well, actually, it's not. I don't tell where it's set, but you can tell if you watch it. And if you, you're from here. Yeah, I mean, you so you that. can tell it's from here, but you, but mostly you can tell it's from the Midwest. You know, but that's that was my background and my upbringing, um, and and all of that is in there. There, I Absolutely. pulled. I grew up in Crystal Lake, um, outside of Chicago. Um, and I pull from experiences, you know, about the whole idea of neighbors. You know, when somebody new moves there, you you 
you have a party, you have a gathering to welcome the neighbors. I mean, that's where all that comes from. Um, and, and not feeling that here and not getting it here and, the, and the, the oddness of it and feeling like the idea of neighborhoods have sort of disappeared in, in the 21st century. Mm. Um, you know, neighbors don't speak to each other as, as much. There aren't block parties as much. And, um, and so that's a lot of what that's about. But at the same time, looking at it in how to deal with what's going on as a black man in America within the, that context too. Um, and, uh, and so most of my, my work is looking at being an African in America. Um, and that means being both African and being African American. Um, and, uh, and so a lot of my, my stories and ideas and uh, things I'm working on are, are within that context. And then hopefully getting a chance to make a film in, in Africa eventually. Um, you know, so, at, and, and having grown, having come up out of um, very community-based um, um, work and, and teaching uh, when I came to Minnesota with Sirius B uh, and a lot of community mentors and, and being taught, um, we were specifically taught to look within our community and see what's missing. And that's what you address. Right. You know, what, what is happening that people aren't talking about, aren't dealing with, what's not being addressed, and that's what you look at, and that's what you focus on and write about. And so since I've been in Minnesota, that's been my practice in theater um, and just about everything I do artistically. And so um, naturally, my films are, are going to be about that, you know, whether it's localized or, you know, expanded from there. Um, so, so, yeah, that's... That's how I look at it in terms of dealing with being a black man in Minnesota and being a black man in, in the world and, and the stories I tell. You know, my, uh, and I, I got you in a second. Michael, I, I heard you speak uh, last time I was here. <clears throat> you said something really interesting that kind of bridges what both of you guys said. You said, um, when you're writing and you're writing uh, a character or you're, you're writing a story or whatever, say... Say like the coolest thing, you know, that, 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 you know, say that thing you wish you would have said, you know, when you think back, like, you know what, man, I should have said, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, so, so it's, you know, it's interesting to, to hear, you know, you're saying um, what's missing, you know what I mean? And being able to reflect and then create, you know, and say, hey, look, this is what, this, this is what, the perspective should have been, or you know, this perspective could have helped, or, you know, or pushed the progress. Uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to. to yeah. No. The, well, I have no choice but to, you know, write from the black experience because first and foremost, I'm black, you know, and and so um, everything starts from there. But but the story can resonate with anybody, you know, and I think I get more um, feedback from my first film, Behemoth Sun. Behemoth Sun was a feature that I met about me meeting my father for the first time um, after 30 some years. And um, that's a universal story, despite, despite the fact that they try to make it seem like, you know, we just always don't have no fathers up in the, in the household. But that's a universal story. And I get more, I mean, I get random emails from people, you know, and I, and, I got a bad habit when I get an email from somebody I don't know. I go to Facebook, and, you know, just check them out, whatever. But I get, you know, emails from people from all walks of life. They're like, man, that story really hit home, you know. And it's a, it's an island film, so it even resonates even that much more. But um, you know, from Hawaiians to people from, from the Africa, you know, and, and a lot of white folks are like this story, you know, means something. Um, now, granted. It came from my perspective, and it came from me being a little kid over in the north side of Minneapolis, so it was definitely has some, you know, African-American, uh, you know, inflections to it. But the story can be universal, you know. So I think I don't look at trying to, and, and again, now if I'm writing for Hollywood and you got, like you said, expectations and, and things like that, you know, that's different, you know, but you still can always try to find a way to try to make it uniquely yours. And I think for me, kind of going back to what Michael said, I think my current project I'm working on now, I've, I've for the first time, as being a writer, I have that champion, you know, where I have 
uh, a legendary actor who's agreed to come on the project. And, you know, he said, oh, let me read the script, you know, let me, let me check it out and see what you, what I think. And then I didn't hear nothing back. And I was like, oh, he's giving me this, don't call me, I'll call you BS, you know. Um, you know, and then he called me one day. He's like, hey, you got a few minutes. You know, I'm on set. I'll call you back in an hour. I was like, all right. And he called me back in an hour. I'm still on set. You know, I'll, I'll call you back. And I was like, all right. So I'm seeing some, you know, energy from him. I'm like, this could be possible. Then he calls me back, like, I don't know, 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And then he literally dismantles my script, you know, and I'm talking to him for literally like two hours. You know, and he's like, I love this part here. I love this. I, you know, why, why are you saying this? When I had to go back and grab my script. I'm like, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, yeah, right here, you know. Yeah. And he's like, but, you know, I like this idea. You know, I like where you're going, you know. Um, this is what I would like to see if I come on board. You know, um, can you do this? How you feel about this? You know, and so that, you know, and I'm in, you know, I'm, like I said, I wrote several shorts and, you know, a couple features. But this is like my first validation, like, man, okay, you know, yeah. the 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 higher ups are seeing, you know, are, are understanding what I'm trying to do, you know, yeah. and so. It's your time. Well, well, the time is relevant, so we'll see, you know. But uh, I'm I'm very optimistic. Let's say that. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Absolutely. So is that? Is is that's that's the. Oh, sure, sure. Um, can can I can I say something really quick? Um, no, I, the the thing is, what, what's important to, to kind of speak on is um, this discussion. It's it's not a how to step by step thing. I think you know the people that came before us uh, are you know our. Um, shoulders that we're standing on like like Robin and Craig and Dan and Pete who were here before uh they they spoke more philosophical and from what I'm hearing is it's 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 almost like philosophy first what do you believe you know and really having that faith over fear you know uh and and I think that that's that's been kind of that that theme that uh that thread and you know just just for the audience just for people who are listening and wondering, okay, am I, you know, like, what do I do? You know, and it's not like a how-to. Like, your story, your path is unique. It's yours. You just got to have faith that what you're creating is good enough. 